uh, interest both then and now. And as far as now is concerned, we're going to have a look at the O'Brien Aluminium Sports Sedan Series, the third race a couple of weeks ago at a very, very wet Oran Park. With me in commentary, Chris Sullivan. As the cars get off the line, you can see there that Paul Nielsen closest to us there, not quite getting the traction. He came from pole position. Steve Lichtenberger out of two. Look at these conditions. Not only do they have to put up with a wet track, but it's dark. There's light shining down, giving them glare off the circuit. Stan Adler with a blinder of a start, Chris. You wouldn't have really imagined that you could get a Porsche off the line like that, but that's exactly what he's done. Nielsen into second. Absolutely. He's, uh, he's doing very well, Nielsen, in Barry Jamison's uh, big Chev-powered Falcon, Greg. Yes, and I can see Lichtenberger up the inside, or at least having a look up the inside. Now, Adler's probably got it better than anyone else. He's out in front just at the moment, which means he doesn't have the spray in behind him. There's a mile of different vehicles out there from uh, Holdens to Fords, Mazda RX-7s, Mazda RX-3s. That's the beauty of the Sports Sedan Series. In essence, you can run anything as long as it was a saloon car that was raced in Australia at some stage in its history. Now, as they come up onto the straight, really, this is where you've got to feel your way around in the conditions. That's Ivan Mikak there, car 42. Lichtenberger doing a nice job there, got the power down, to coming round the outside of him, and as they storm down into the left-hand turn here, these cars are still doing well over 200 kilometres an hour down the straight in the rain. It, it is the case. The, uh, the Lichtenberger car you noted earlier is a, a rover-powered uh, jigger, a fine machine, fairly new, uh, only been uh, up and running around the six-month mark. And the beauty of that car is that he has built virtually every last nut and bolt on the car. It is a real credit to him. Paul Nielsen on screen there, and you can see that he has now got the head and for Nielsen, what a great drive from him. This is the first time in Barry Jamison's car, in this particular machine. He's actually using it for the first time. Came out here a couple of days ago in testing and discovered that uh, this thing's pretty swift and in fact has done a fantastic job with the car. And in these conditions, just how difficult is it to learn a new vehicle? Here comes Ivan Mikak, 42, trying to get around Adler there in the Porsche. And Mikak heading down the inside. Now, as I remember, that. The circuit's pretty wet on the inside. There's a fair bit of water going across the track there. When we saw the trucks a little earlier, they were getting into trouble with that line. And maybe Mick Hack's uh, using it to good effect. I'm not sure how, but it's working for him. Nielsen down into the S is doing a fine job out in front. I think Mick Hack now, a bit between the teeth, is going to try and run him down. These boys are lucky being out in front. The, the midfielders will be having a, uh, a sizable time, I'd suggest. Not so much from the, uh, the slipperiness of the circuit, that's one thing, but the fogging of windscreens would be uh, a major concern, I'm sure. Lawrence there in the Commodore, that seems to be well suited as well. It's got small tyres, they seem to be able to cut through the, the water. And you can see the debris on the circuit. Well, the trucks have been maybe naughty a little, just in bringing some of the dramas uh, to the sports sedan and some of the other classes. They simply bring some of the, the debris onto the circuit. It does make life very difficult. Lichtenberger there looks strong in that car. Rover powered. RX-7, it is unusual. Fastest lap, Ivan Mikhak, a 53.28. To give you an idea, that's about 10 seconds off what he should set as a fast time around here. So for him, he's just tippy-toeing his way around. The rotary would be a difficult car. It's got a weapon rotary in it. Makes plenty of horsepower, about 310 horsepower, maybe 330. But the best part is this thing only weighs about 700 kilos. You can see the repairs on the front of Mikhak's car there. He had a little indiscretion in the first race. But yes, this thing only weighs 700 kilos. It's pretty hard to, uh, to beat something like that. Mikhak gets himself sideways. Up the inside he goes into the lead. So he really did fight for that. He stuck to the inside and uh, was prepared to lay it all on the line. That's exactly what he's done. It's paid off for him. Mikhak into the lead. And from here, you would expect that he will just reel them off. Some of the big horsepower machines out there, Greg, would be uh, uh, in all sorts of bother. I'd suggest Mikhak's little 700 kilo beast is, uh, is doing what it should. To uh, what uh, what grip he can uh, he can achieve? Well, it's like a wound spring. This thing it really does fire. But gee, what about Paul Nelson here in second place? This is a brilliant run for someone who is unfamiliar with the car. And if you've ever seen a sports sedan up close, they are not very user friendly. Most of the drivers. Oh, here comes Lichtenberger. He's had a touch and he's pulled it up in the sand. Gee, that was close. And unfortunately, there's damage to the rear of the car. But fortunately, he didn't stick it into the wall. Jack Cesar there, car 29. That is 54. Wildridge in trouble as well. So uh, Craig Wildridge turning it around there. Again, he managed to pull it up short of the wall, so that is good news. Uh, and the conditions are just so changeable out there as well. You only have to be half of a metre off the side of the line that you would normally be on, and all of a sudden you discover there's a puddle there. I noticed 
just uh, Mick Hack there turning the lights off on his car. Maybe he's not happy with the alternator system on the car at any one time. Most of the sports sedans do not race at night, and the lighting systems, well, are not always up to the task. Here's another one switching the lights off. This Barry Morecambe seems to have a similar problem. Lights back on again. Yep, brand new car to him as well. Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's good to see him out testing and, and running with the car. He's pretty pleased. Mind you, the car he ran had a similar chassis system, so for him, it's, uh, it's a matter of just adapting to a new body shape. It's easier into the pits here. Uh, a touch early with Lichtenberger, putting Lichtenberger into you know, the sand pit at uh, Momo Corner, Greg. Yeah, bad luck there. Last lap now for Ivan Mikak, a builder from Canberra. He'll be pretty pleased with this. Uh, it's been a good performance. It was a bad day for him. It started out, he stuck it in, and uh, they worked tirelessly, put it all back together, and here he is out in the final race. So Brian Aluminium, Sports Sedan Series here at Oran Park, has been running all season, and it's been a big point score race for all of the competitors. So they really have had to just be consistent and try and put the races together, try and pick up the points. Well, in fact, this season has been a huge prize money season for the Sports Sedan. It's better than $40,000 in cash and prizes up for grabs. You can bet these guys really are racing for Sheep Station. Very serious about it. Mick Hack, look at the crowd still here. Night time, it's standing in the rain. Got a hand it to the Mick Hack though, he's turned it on, he's done a great job here and has tippy toed his way around the circuit. For enough times out in front to grab the win. Paul Nielsen's going to come across the line for a very well deserved second place. Stan Adler in the Porsche will grab third.